The designer who I have chosen to discuss from the What is Good Design 1944 to 56 exhibition goes by the name of Alexey Brodovich. <clears throat> Known best from being a graphic designer and for his work in the American fashion mag magazine Harper's Bazaar, Brodovich was a loyal supporter of the Tsar, became first lieutenant in the Tsar's White Army. However, I will get into more depth about Brodovich's accomplishments soon. Born in Ogolichi, Russia in 1898, into an aristocrat and wealthy family where his mother was an amateur painter and his father was a psychiatrist, physician and respected huntsman. Having his youth marked by the Bolshevik Revolution, Brodovich differed his present goal of attending the Imperial Art Academy to fight for the Tsar in their battle against the Astro-Hungarian Empire. Being a loyal supporter of the Tsar, earned Brodovich the privilege of becoming first lieutenant in the Tsar's White Army. Coming from a wealthy family, Brodovich had never felt the, the despair of living in poverty until 1920, when he fled to Paris as an exile from the October Revolution. Being unemployed for the first time since he was a child, Brodovich managed to enroll himself in a community of Russian artists. This community was a major motivation boost for Brodovich to give him the confidence and passion to become a painter. As time progressed, Brodovich worked closer each day so he could fulfill his aspiration of becoming a painter. Managing a position as a set painter for Digalib's Ballet Ruses, Brodovich gained attention from various designers by winning a poster competition, which looked for the most groundbreaking design as a way to publicise an upcoming ball in Paris. The winning poster design, the Bal Banal, marked the beginning of Brodovich's career as a graphic designer, as no time was wasted with the, with the rise of numerous job offers from multiple design agencies. Gaining more experience and constantly working, Brodovich felt like Paris had lost its spirit of adventure and wanted something new in hope to expand his career on. Eventually, Brodovich decided on his future and felt that organising a design class in Philadelphia was the right choice. In 1930, Brodovich started design classes at the Philadelphia College of Art due to the lack of designers, mainly due to the Wall Street economical downfall in 1929. Brodovich was known to be a pioneer of modernism as he was one of the first designers to introduce the style to the US. <coughs> Brodovich would then go on to train his students the essentials of design, especially a European design that was booming at the time. Brodovich was known to allow his students to be involved with some of his freelance side projects he was doing. This gave his students the proper experience and knowledge of what it's like to do a job for a client. In 1933, Brodovich opened up several more workshops known as Design Laboratory. Here he encouraged students to be think independently to find solutions and create their own method of design as Brodovich quotes. Shortly after, the photographer for Harper's Bazaar, Ralph Steiner, recognised Brodovich's potential and desire and directed him to the chief and editor, Carmel Snow. This led to Brodovich becoming the new art director of Harper's Bazaar in 1934. Newly appointed, Brodovich asked a few designers such as Jean Cockatoo Man Ray and Rael Dofi from Europe to assist him. Brodovich was seen to have deployed a lot of white space to create a form of elegance. Despite being criticised for wasting space, he continued trying new techniques for his designs and became the first art director to integrate images with text. This was different as during time, Americans would deploy text and illustrations separately to avoid confusion. <coughs> His freelance work expanded throughout the 1940s. It wasn't until 1949 where he became a director of the magazine named Portfolio where three issues were released across two years. The magazine was quite popular and gained fame as it showcased many famous designers such as Paul Rand, Saul Steinberg and Alexander Calder. Brodovich started to neglect his position at Harper's due to being in and out of the office so he could complete his new job offers. In his designs of portfolio, 
These designs were very distinct through the aid of transparent pages and multiple page foldouts. Being a heavy drinker, Brodovich's issues with alcohol developed. This ultimately played a massive role in the loss of his job at Harper's Bazaar in 1958. Shortly after, his beloved wife Nina passed away. Things only got worse for Brodovich as both his mental and financial situations gradually disintegrated until he passed away on the 15th of April 1971 in Le Thor, France, after spending his last three years in a small village south of France. Brodovich's featured product design in the What is Good Design 1944-56 exhibition, The Floor Chair, which was designed in 1950 from cost-efficient materials such as plywood and wood dowels. Respected German designer Dieter Ram's principles of good design were greatly focused on during the 1930s, especially from the Museum of Modern Art, who used his principles as a way to select the designs for the exhibition. Brodovich's chair was unique due to its simplicity, which were related to multiple of Ram's principles, especially principles 1, 4 and 12. The form of wool waves pulled nicely and fluently with a repetition of ropes to create an ordinary chair feel but a luxurious and affordable appearance. During the period of the time, the chair was interesting aesthetically as no one really imagined a chair to possess then types of materials and techniques such as plywood in a wavy form which was supported by rope. Despite its interesting look, the chair looks very comfortable to sit on which is the sole factor for one to purchase, as you would not want to feel uncomfortable and unsafe. The materials used are environmentally friendly and cost efficient, as Brodovich resorted to plywood, wood dowels and rope, so the chair would, would be cheap to manufacture, function well, and be aesthetically pleasing along with meeting the standards of Ram's principles when compared to the other entries in the exhibition. Studying and getting to know Brodovich's work more and more, I've developed the idea that you don't need to design anything big, colourful or something out of this world to be noticed as long as it is functional. I relate to this as when I design I focus on enough details so my work is both aesthetically pleasing and able to communicate my message in which I want to convey to my audience. Thank you.